Yeah. All right. So let's try. So welcome. This is. Uh, Hi, I'm here. Yeah, this is episode three of the uh, Knights Beach Resort. Welcome to uh, my makeshift studio in storage. Welcome to episode three of the Night Speech. What we're talking about today is Night Speech uh, RV Park in uh, Dunville, Ontario. And uh, we're talking about why from the park, what would be their, their goal. And so what I'm doing is I'm going to explain to you why they would do this. Pretty simple. Well, that marker's no good. Throw that one out. Hold on. Oh, that's better. So, I'm going to show you why they would do this. So, here's the park. This is the road. And here's the road over here. These are the uh, two edges of the park. And then over this way, I'm going by their map here. Uh, this is essentially the beach area. And you know, kind of a rounded area over here. So right now, we have trailers here, and we've got 10, 12, 14, 15. So we've got 17 lots there, and then this is a walkway. And then we've got, uh, what do we got? Okay, so the office is over here, and the gate. That's where you're coming into the park. So we're coming down this way into the park. So here's Lake Erie. So. Let's forget about this part of the park today. We'll come back to that some other day. But right now, or maybe not, because you know my ADD always kicks in and who knows what's going on. But right now we've got 34 waterfront lots. Now, they very much have the potential to add more over here in this undeveloped area, which is, this is where they have the tenting. And tenting's not gonna make them very much money. These could be turned into more waterfront lots here and who cares about having the beach access? Let these people have the waterfront. And down in this way, it's a little, the way the things are set up now, there are some waterfront or um, what Shirkston Shores calls cliff front, so, uh, but that still has a really high premium. So they could put in a bunch more down here. So we've got 34 in here and they could probably put at least 15 more in the waterfront line. So let's just take a look at that and, and what the deal is. So all these trailers are owned by individuals, not by the park. They're owned by tenants. Roughly $11,000 annual income. Hold on. I even brought in my old school calculator. So 34 lots and we've got $11,000. Some of you guys have already done the math on that. I'm not that good. So that equals $374,000 a year. Not bad. Now you've got, I don't, I'm not even sure how many more lots in the back. Like I said, we're not really dealing with that today anyway. But so we'll say they have total 262. This is just for curiosity's sake. 262 lots. So now if we take away the 34 from that, so there's 228 back lots. They're about $3,000. So that's another $684,000. So a total, $1,058,000. But remember, this is a gross revenue for the park. Now, they also have some revenue from the campers. So you can think that, you know, they could probably up that revenue to, uh, Oh, we say maybe 1.3 million, maybe. And that sounds pretty good to you. If you don't make a shitload of money, that sounds okay. But it's not. First off, there's three generations. And we talk about this on the website. There's three generations. Oh, that's good. They've got three generations of folks they need to support. There's Marvin, there's David, and there's Edward. They're all grown men. They all have families. I don't know, maybe Edward doesn't have families yet, doesn't have kids and a wife yet. But still, he's got to look to his future. And so they need to make more money. Now, let me emphasize here, making more money is perfectly fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's how they achieve it that I have a problem with. And I've said that before, and I will say it again. So let's look at this from a different standpoint. Now, over at Shirkston Shores, the rents start Shirkston Shores. Now, for those of you who don't know, Shirkston Shores is a park that's extremely similar to this, and it's really close. I'm not sure exactly how close, but it couldn't be more than 20 kilometers away down the lake. 
Same waterfront, same lake, same weather, everything's the same, season's the same lake. The rents over there, the low rents are $6,800 versus the $3,000, and the high rent are $15,130 for the waterfront, instead of the $11,000. So let's take a look at that. Again, now we've got 34 lots times. So instead of 374, 514,000. And that just, that skyrockets. So where did I put the annual for that over here? So that becomes 1,550,000 here. So the total, you done the math for me yet? 514, we've got an income of 2,064,000. $820, not the annual rental. So you can see how much that's increased the revenue. Well, why wouldn't it? I mean, it's doubled the revenue. So if you can do it at Shirts, you can do it here. Why? Well, the difference is, is that Night Speed is a bit of a shoddy park. An older park, it's getting a little rough uh, around the edges. If you go over to Shirkston, it's very well manicured. It's a very pretty park. It looks good. If you're going to double the rents, if you're going to go from 3000 to 6800 more than doubling the rents. If you're going to take the 11000 up to 15000 you need to make the park pretty. You're going to have to make a bunch of improvements. You're going to have to put a lot of money into it, but it will return a lot of money, so that's okay. Now, let's look at the next thing. Churchton Shores has a bunch of weekly rentals. So now, on weekly rentals, go from a little tiny cabin, the small cabin is $657 a week. And they go all the way up to waterfront rooftop. Okay, so a waterfront rooftop for $1,000. $895 a week. So now we start looking at that and saying, well, <clears throat> let's see now. If you can get $15,000 for the entire season, but here you can get $1,895. So let's just do the math on that one. So $15,130. This, this is the price of the church in short. $15,000. So this is already increasing over what Night Speech is charging. So in eight weeks, you've made the same amount of as you make for the entire season. Now, the entire season is only six months, but still, that gives you four more months of rental increasing your income. So if you feel cocky enough to definitely, 100%, rent out every cabin or every trailer, July and August, all eight weeks of July and August, if you're sure you can rent it out, you're always full, then you've made the seasonal rent, and you don't have to have any seasons at all. So any additional rent you can get, June, maybe a little bit in September, a little bit in May, that's going to boost your income even further. That's pretty good. Why wouldn't you? Okay, so let's take one more look. Right now, these trailers are owned by individuals. These trailers are owned by individuals at night. If you want to come into the park, you're going to pay this $11,000. They're going to charge you a landing fee of $20,000, which they call an impact. And you're going to buy this trailer from the individual. So the park's only making a commission on the sale. They're not, you know, if you buy one of these trailers for $30,000, uh, they'll make three thousand bucks or whatever the commission is, forty-five hundred bucks, whatever it is. But they're not making the thirty thousand. So them, that looks like well, that's money. So the thinking is, well, why don't we take these trailers out? Why don't we just rip all of these out of here and we'll put brand new trailers in here? But the park will put them in here. And some of them they'll rent out on a weekly basis, like we said over here, eighteen hundred ninety-five dollars a week for some of them. And some of them just to guarantee the income. They'll sell those trails and then lease them the property for $15,000 a season. So sort of the average price over here at Night's Beach is about thirty, maybe $40,000 and sometimes a lot less for trailers on the water. Get back over to Shirts and Shore. Trailers on the water at Shirts for a used one can go as high as $160,000. Well, they start. I shouldn't say go as high. They start at $160,000 and they go all the way up to $290,000. So now if we look at these annual rents, but here we have 34 trailers. So let's say they put in 34 luxury trailers along here, and they sell them all. 34, all new. That means <coughs> sold, excuse me, that means sold to seasonal campers. They're gonna have to buy these from a manufacturer, but there's a huge, huge markup in them. These trailers that are selling for $290,000 cost, when you're buying in bulk, they cost something less than $40,000. So there's a huge profit. But let's just look at the gross side of it. The gross side, nine million, $860,000 to sell these trailers off. They're, they're going to make $9,860,000 gross and they're going to have an annual income of $2 million. That's compared to what they've got going right now, which is maybe $1.3 million a year. In one year alone, 
if they did really well with this in one year alone just doing the waterfront not the rest of the park just the waterfront alone almost what is that nine ten eleven twelve million dollars just here they can do twelve million dollars if they redevelop this part down here and redevelop some of this part up here that would increase to about 18 million dollars just that one squat then come back and open in all new trailers in here these trailers can be selling up in the hundred thousand dollar range much higher for new if they're brand new and built for you with the $6,800 rent. So now they might have to give up a bit of that $13 million and make a better access because that's how they're going to justify the high numbers back in here. Remember, they got 228 lots back in here. So that's why they're doing it. That's my point. That's why they would do it. People say to me, well, why would they do this? And it's, it's, it's simple. There's only one reason they're doing it. They're doing it for money. That's fine. That's fine. We all, one way or another, do things for money. We all have to make a living. That's the way it is. That's the way our, That's not the point. The point is, they're doing it. It's this project. This whole project has to be put together, and they've got to put the money. Now, they've probably got some savings. They've probably got a little bit of bank credit. But this is a pretty aggressive project to finance. So what better way to finance it than next spring all out because they've all violated all violated the rule now they've got that chunk of money three hundred and seventy four thousand dollars for these people 34 lots so they've got that three hundred seventy five thousand bucks to start with to start building this new empire so again to build the empire that's fine it's their park they can do what they want they, they put that mantra into everyone's head it's our park you can do what we want okay great yes you can you can do what you want allowed to do that and that's what they're going to do here. between three hundred and nine hundred thousand dollars to put in the bank it's not huge but it's enough to make a good dent to get started on this new project take that take some bank financing take some money they've got in the bank themselves maybe some private investors they're good to go they can build this park and make all this money they've now got this beautiful park it's all redone beautiful park they had a mini golf they're right now they're building a petting zoo across the road well you know people think oh they're putting in this petting zoo for the existing tenants and, and for the campers no they're putting in the petting zoo to make the whole project more attractive to be able to sell all this they've got to have the petting zoo they're going to have to probably put a pool in somewhere over here uh, they'll put in a mini golf whatever whatever all the stuff that people want plus the beautiful beach they'll put all that stuff in there to make this whole sale prettier to people to convince people it's worth spending all this extra money far more than they would be spending now that's the reason for it but if you're a tenant at night speech right now before you pay your rent next year you go into that office and you say marlene marvin edward david write me a contract that says i don't have to take my adder room down i don't have to take my deck down i don't have to take my canopy down. write me a contract that says i don't have to pull up my patio stone write me a contract that says my trailer that's more than 10 years old can stay on your property see if they'll do that before you write them a check i'll guarantee you they won't so listen thanks guys and uh, remember to uh, nightsbeachresort.com Go to the site, Night Speech YouTube. Go to that site. There's a link on nightspeech.com to take you over to YouTube. You can learn more about all this and what's going on. Best of luck to all of you.